ST has uh, their own project generation configuration tool, which helps the developer to generate source code for a certain uh, microcontroller and import it into Atollic Tree Studio. So I'll just give a quick demonstration of that. Um, I go to, I'm going to bring up another perspective here. Um, we are currently in the CC++ editing perspective where most of the editing is done in, uh, in True Studio. We also have here what's called the debug perspective, uh, which we can switch to where we see all the debug related views, such as special function registers, etc. But we'll come to that later. What I wanted to say is that we have another perspective, such as editing and debug, which is specific for STM32 development, and that's the CubeMX perspective. So I'll click OK. STM32 CubeMX is a tool developed by ST. It's an, uh, it's an open source Eclipse plugin that integrates into TrueStudio like this. You can download it from somewhere. Um, let's see. The easiest way would be to go to our application notes web page to learn this. Uh, application notes and then integrate STM32 CubeMX with Atomic Tree Studio. There you will download a PDF file which will help you understand how to do that. But it's very simple, so I might as well run a quick, uh, quickly show you how it's done. Um, you notice here that I have downloaded STM30. Oh, sorry, this one, ST Software STM32 Online D5.zip. It is the STM32 CubeMX Eclipse plugin. So I think I have it here in my download folder. Now, if I want to import that plugin into True Studio, I go to Help, Install New Software, and then I go Add. I give uh, the repository where I fetched information a name. Uh, typically, you would give it STM32 Cube MX, but I probably already have that repo, so I'll do it like that. Then you go for Archive and then downloads and here's my file. I go open. Okay. So immediately uh, we parse this information in the zip file and you can sh see that oh here's the STM32 CubeMX Eclipse plugin. However all items are already installed uh, in my environment so therefore no further steps are necessary. Otherwise you would have selected this checkbox, click next then accepted a couple of different license agreements, yada, yada, yada. Uh, you will then get a dialogue uh, prompting saying that um, the, the software you're trying to import has not been authenticated, something like that. But no worries, just click OK, then restart the IDE and CubeMX should be available to you via this button, Open Perspective. STM32 CubeMX. So now you're on the same page as I am, hopefully. Anyway, this is just an example. Uh, other silicon vendors such as Freescale and um, Infineon have their own um, com um, project configurators similar to this. So let me now just create a new project to show how this is done. Um, first I can select which microcontroller I want to choose. And this um, tool is actually used also to determine, based on my requirements for my product, uh, it can help you select the right microcontroller derivative. So perhaps you need uh, five I2S peripherals. If I hit the five here, sorry, numlock wasn't enabled, like that, click tab, then you have filtered out these microcontrollers. They are the only ones that satisfy that requirement. So now you know. But let's not care about that more and instead create the project. 
I'm going to go for the board selector instead of the MCU selector. Vendor, ST Microelectronics. Then I'm going for the discovery board and I'm going to filter out the F4 device family. And then I'll choose my board, which is the F4 discovery board. And I click OK. The tool is now working. It is going to generate an XML file uh, holding the configuration for this board. So here you see that uh, the push button, for example, let's see if I can zoom this as I could uh, by holding down control and use the mouse wheel. So here you see that um, pin A0 is set up to be a GPIO, external interrupt, etc. Uh, here we have a USB on the go file system. And here we have the LED set up for this board. So with this tool you can configure various peripherals um, without having to write that much code. So for example I could set up a timer, timer 6, I could activate that one, set it up to uh, one pulse mode and then if I go to the configuration here I will see that now in control I have timer 6 set up and here I can add additional settings without having to write code and the drivers, uh, the source code for that will be generated for me in Teacher Studio. Let's just click OK like that. Also here I get help with the clock configuration tree to determine uh, proper settings of uh, dividers and multipliers to achieve the uh, output clock frequencies I need on the different peripheral buses, etc. But that's actually outside the scope of this getting started <laughs> webinar, so let's proceed. We could probably spend hours just here. Uh, now I will uh, save this project. Uh, move up one stage. And I will call it F4 Discovery Test. Click Save. And now I will click Generate Code. And hopefully I have a firmware package downloaded for this microcontroller. I'm not sure. Um, so I give the project a name. Here is where the output is going to be generated in cube and there. So the source file is going to go here, all the source, all the source files. And the, the project file that TrueStudio eats or imports is going to this subfolder. Select the TrueStudio ID. And then there are a number of different library uh, options I can select, etc., uh, etc. Et then I click OK, and ah, oh, I don't have the firmware driver library downloaded. So if I had, <laughs> if I had had that, uh, I would have generated a project. So let me just um, cancel. Quickly show you how this instead is possible with another board. I think I tried it earlier today. L4476. So, can we generate code here? Uh, test. Just call it like that. Click OK. Now it's generating code. And let's click Open Project. Then we move to CC++. And here we now have the new project that was generated for us. If I click Build, the project should build for me. And here is my example application. Let's see, user may not see. So here, here it is, and now I can start write my user code in between these comment blocks. Everything outside this comment box will be regenerated by the Cube MX tool if you choose to do a reconfiguration of the project. So be careful to put all your uh, application code inside of these brackets. Well, not brackets, but uh, the user code begin and the user code end blocks. Uh, this little arrow on these files indicate that this file is actually not residing inside of this project, it's linked into the project. 
So if I go main.c and right click and go to properties, resources, then the resolve location is actually there. Uh, and that is not where I have this project. If we take a look at where this project is located, I think it will be somewhere else. Uh, it's resolved there, which is slightly different. 